This is question 6 through 12 of the June 2016 Regents exam. Let's go through some answers and explanations. For question 6, you're looking here for the chemical name for H2SO3. Hopefully you recognize that you're dealing with an acid because hydrogen is written first. And there is a reference table for acids. Here it is, reference table K. And all you need to do is play the matching game here and notice the answer or the name is sulfurous acid which of course is choice two so H2SO3 is sulfurous acid I'm gonna write that down as a fact let's move it on to question seven which substance is most soluble in water well we got four choices here there is a solubility reference table and you have to know how to use it so I'm gonna call this a skill now, with that reference table, I'm not a big fan of the way that this is laid out, but you know what? We have to deal with it. We have a column here for soluble compounds. Exceptions means insoluble. is not going to dissolve in water. Then we have more insoluble, and then exceptions meaning soluble. So your solubles are on the outside, and your insolubles are on the inside. Well, let's go back. Well, what you have to do here for the four choices, you're dealing with ionic compounds, meaning that they're going to split up in water into ions. So you want to split it between the metal, for example, like calcium carbonate. You would split it right between the calcium and the carbonate, and I just knocked over the silver of the silver and the sulfate, or for NH4, which is ammonium. Okay, And then you have to go to the reference table, and just figure out it's asking or telling you most soluble so what does that mean that means three of the four are going to be in an insoluble column and one of the four is going to be soluble so if we go back well if I start with my ammonium phosphate it had the NH4 and the PO4 I split it up I mean have NH4 three but don't worry about that we're looking here notice here it is already. The ammonium ion and any compound with ammonium is soluble in water. The other compounds, you're going to find at least one of the ions that's insoluble. So right away, choice one is the answer. Let's keep going. All right, for question E, it says which type of bonding is present uh, in a sample of an element that is malleable? Well, this, of course, is a fact of any kind of metal or metallic bonding which is choice two so let's move on question nine which atom has the greatest attraction for electrons in a chemical bond well the greatest attraction for electrons by definitions definition rather means electronegativity I'm not going to spell the whole thing out because it'll take forever. But here's the deal. That's the definition, so you have to realize you're looking for electronegativity. Then it's really a definition and a skill because electronegativities are listed on reference table S. So if we take a look and flip through to reference table S, what are we dealing with? We're dealing with hydrogen and electronegativity of 2.2, oxygen, 3.4, silicon, where are you, 1.9, and sulfur, 2.6. And you were asked which one is the highest, ba-bam, there it is, oxygen, which is 3.4, because it's the greatest attraction, means the highest value. All right, number 10, which type of reaction involves the transfer of electrons? That, again, to me, is a definition, right? and that's a redox reaction or in this case it's written as oxidation reduction your teacher probably taught you Leo goes Gurr and it's a way to remember really in a way the definitions that oxidation is when a substance losing electrons and reduction is gaining electrons alright question 11 now question 11 is a little tricky so I could understand having a little bit of a hard time with this. I'm going to call this one a skill question. 
got a 10 gram sample, so okay, okay, first of all, grams we know is mass, so that's a mass thing. It's nitrogen at STP. And it says which property will increase, so that's key, when the sample is cooled to 72 Kelvin at standard pressure. So what's happening here is we're looking for something increasing. Right away, we know temperature is decreasing because it was cooled to 72. So right away, let's cross out temperature. Can't be the answer. Okay. Uh, now, it's at standard pressure. So one might think, oh, wait a minute, maybe we're dealing with volume. Now remember, there's the combined gas law right here. Right, so P1 V1 T1 is equal to P2 V2 T2. Let's go back. All right, so if I have pressure times volume over temperature is equal to pressure times volume over temperature. And it's at standard pressure, so pressure ain't changing. Well, that's good English. Thanks. We know that the temperature went down. Well, guess what? We, you could plug in numbers here. They don't give you the numbers. But we know volume and temperature is a direct re relationship. That means that the volume also went down. Can't be the answer. Okay. Uh, then we're dealing with density or mass. Well, it didn't add anything, so it's not going to be mass. And let's check out and see if density makes sense. So density, of course, is mass over volume. If you forgot that, which most students know that from elementary school, it is given on the reference table at the top. So if the mass is staying constant, because we didn't add or take away any, and it's not reacting or anything, the nitrogen, and the volume went down, and this is constant, then the density had to have gone up. So there's my answer, choice three. And finally, for question 12, which element is a gas at STP? Well, once again, we're back to facts. And maybe one of the ways, of course, you remember this is by looking at the periodic table. Okay, you have this group here, group 18. Yes, you know the name. They are the noble gases. Besides the noble gases, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine, and hydrogen are your gases. So it's one of those. If we go back, sure enough, the best choice there is going to be xenon, which is choice two. Now, it's a little tricky because the reference tables, you do have the symbols and names here in reference table S. So if there's, for example, xenon, you forgot what the symbol is, then use reference table S because the periodic table that you get doesn't have the name of the element. Keep working hard. Practice as many questions as you can. Remember, with your facts and definitions and even your skills, it's practice, practice, practice.